Now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo, the sun beat down relentlessly on the village and the dusty hairpin road that led up to it. A few goats sought the shade of the gnarled olive trees. It was siesta time. No one stirred. Up the hill, at an incredibly slow pace, came a donkey cart, its driver apparently asleep under his wide-brimmed hat. At the crest of the hill, the cart stopped. The driver turned and looked over his shoulder. Lying on the sacks in the open cart was a figure in soldier's uniform. The driver made a gesture with his thumb, indicating a small whitewashed house. The soldier stirred, jumped to the ground and approached the house. A dog lying near the door looked up and scratched itself sleepily. Behind the slatted windows, two men watched. This is one of them. What do you think, Arcos? It's the right size, exactly the right size. In fact, Martin, if he was dressed in a London city suit with a bowler and umbrella, that could be John Steed. Take him in. Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. Over one million South African housewives have proved it. And Mrs. Bodington is one of them. My wash is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud of it. My husband particularly wears a lot of white plain bowls and his clothing always looks delightful. There's nothing like cold water Omo. Yes, once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Cold water Omo is the washing powder that cleans best. Wall's Ice Cream presents the new Pink Pussycat song. We've got strawberry and vanilla, pop and hop. That's on inside. White milky chocolate the way you like. All over the outside. We're Wall's Pink Pussycat uh -huh. Episode one of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel journey to Spain to find a great deal of heat, a lot of flies, a mysterious intrigue, and too many olays. In London, the weather was miserable. Drizzle fell from the grey clouded sky. A keen wind whipped round the street corners. There was the inevitable traffic jam to aggravate Mrs. Peel's slight depression as she made her way towards John Steed's apartment. By the time she got to the mews, she was irritable and scowling. Steed's front door was open. She knocked and entered. Anyone at home? Steed? Steed! Buenos dias, senorita. Pleased to accept. John Steed entered the room from the kitchen, clicking a pair of castanets. He stopped in front of Mrs. Peel with a sharp rap of his heels and presented her with a rose. A rose. Thank you, Steed. Am I supposed to put it between my teeth and join in, or what? Not or what, Mrs. Peel, please. Care for a glass of rare Spanish sherry? Oh, well, it might keep out the cold. All right. Steed produced decanter and two glasses as though by magic and poured the sherry expertly and gently. Well, come on, let's have it. Patience, patience. Sherry must flow into the glass. I didn't mean the drink. I can wait for that. What I can't wait to know is why all this Spanish kick. Oh, just getting in a little practice, that's all. Here, salute. 
Good old-fashioned English bottoms up. Not where we're going. And where are we going? Tarragon, near Saragossa in sunny Spain. Olé. You serious, Steve? Never more, sir. Mother phoned up. It's all arranged. We leave this afternoon. Oh, Steve, how splendid. Sunshine, vino, lazing by the sea. Ah, uh, there's no sea near Tarragon, but there should be plenty of vino. There's also a peace conference going on. Mother wants us to keep an eye on a couple of dubious delegates. I shouldn't imagine it'll be too difficult. I said, Cece, si, si. do you agree? Cece, si, si. salute. <laughs> Better go now. Down through the barrier. Come follow me. At the bull ring at Tarragon, two men pushed their way through the crowds to a door which led down a flight of stone steps under the changing rooms. It was dim and cool in the inner room. Only the faint sound of the bullfight above them could be heard. Strapped to a chair in the middle of the room was a man in soldier's uniform. He had a mask on his face. Standing over him, working on the mask, was a heavily built doctor in surgeon's robes. The man called Arcos approached. You are ready for us, doctor? I think this is the best I can do, Arcos. Then remove the mask. Let us see. The doctor skillfully inserted a scalpel into a crack in the plaster cast and broke the mask in two pieces. The soldier groaned and gasped for air. <laughs> Tousled and sweating, he gazed around him. Please... Please, what you do to me? What, what you do? Markin approached over the stone floor, took a hand mirror from the clinical-looking bench, and held it in front of the soldier. <laughs> Look how pretty you are, my friend. <gasps> but, but that is, is not my face. That is, is, is not, it's not me. It's not my face. But it did look remarkably like John Steed's face. Mm, what do you think, Argos? Well, he knows it's wrong, man. Uh, the hairline, too. The ears. Uh, the best I can do. Yeah, compare with the photograph. Arcos picked up some full-plate photographs of John Steed and then threw them down impatiently. Uh, we cannot work from photographs. It is impossible. Impossible. Uh, what can we do? We need Steed, the real man. We need Steed himself. It will not work without him. We must capture Steed. And what about him? Markin indicated the soldier strapped to the chair. Arcos drew a gun from beneath his coat. Dispensable. No, no, no! Ah! The Miranda Hotel at Tarragon is not lavish. Visually, it's a piece of old Spain. In the taxi, upon arrival, Mrs. Peel was enchanted. Oh, Steve, this is delightful. The real thing. Yes, I hope the plumbing's for real, too. They climbed out of the taxi and walked into the hotel, unaware that under the trees across the road they were being watched by Arcos and Markin. That is Steed. Mm. And the woman? I do not know. His woman, I suppose. She will not bother us. If she does, then she too will have to be taken care of. Come, let us make the phone call. Upstairs, Mrs. Peel was shown into a simple, charming room with shuttered windows. She tipped the elderly porter and moved to the shutters, drawing them aside and gazing down into the street. She noticed two men moving away towards a red saloon. Steed entered the room. Olé, from Uldava. You've been at the phrase book again. That's right. I've finally mastered the Spanish for my grandfather's ear trumpet has been struck by lightning. <laughs> Terribly useful. I think I'm going to like it here. What's your room like? Oh, very different. Oh? Yes, indeed. My dressing table's at least six inches near the window. Hmm. Who'd have thought it, Steed? A holiday at last. Well, it's not a holiday, actually. I thought I'd explain. Well, almost a holiday. We're official observers at the peace conference. Very serious business. Well, I hope the peace conference lives up to its name. Very thoughtful of them to hold it in Spain. Very thoughtful of the Spaniards to instigate it. Fancy an anisette. Never tried it. Highly recommended. A jigger of anisette, piece of ice, splash of cool water. Yeah, let's go down and find the bar. Steve stepped back to allow Mrs. Peel to precede him into the corridor. As she did so, a voice said, Will you marry me? 
A startlingly good-looking man, blonde and athletic, stood framed in the doorway. Will you be my wife? Uh, good day to you, sir. Please, madam, will you marry me? M m marry you? Please, I implore you to be my wife. Only for five minutes or so. Oh, there uh, he Say is. nothing. Leave everything to me. Oh, Baron. Oh, gee, Baron, Kurt, baby, say it isn't true. You promised you'd choose between me and that redhead. Oh. Why, Helga, imagine oh. seeing you. Uh, may I present my wife? My wife... Uh, oh, Emma. Uh, my wife, Emma. You About being married? Oh, good baby. Oh, how mortifying. Another one out of circulation. Goodbye forever. Goodbye, Helga. You have earned my undying gratitude. May I present myself to Baron von Kurt? Always at your service. Uh, I'm John Steed. Uh, this is Emma Peel. How do you do? Uh, you must forgive my intrusion, but as you have seen... You have your problems. My own fault. A foolish mistake. I tried to be friendly. And the thing grew on you? We understand each other, Mr. Steed. Thank you again, Miss Peel. Uh, Mrs. Peel, it wouldn't have worked out. Bigger me. <laughs> I kiss your hand. <laughs> it was a pleasure being married to you. Adios. Baron von Kurt clicked his heels smartly, turned and strolled down the corridor. Mrs. Beale turned with a shrug of her elegant shoulders and raised an eyebrow at Steve. Well, that's the trouble with these holiday romances. They never last. A short while after that, while sipping Anisette on the terrace, Steed was called to the telephone. John Steed? Ah, Senor Steed. Welcome to Spain. Captain Jose of the Spanish Secret Service. We have yet to meet him. Well, I'm delighted to talk to you, Captain. I hope we meet soon. There are many things to discuss, you understand. You could uh, call upon me, perhaps immediately, uh, por favor? Well, I think I can manage it. Uh, can you give me the address? Uh, 14 Caladal. Fourteen carried to Luna. Right, I'll take a taxi and be with you in half an hour. Muchas gracias, senor. Adios. Adios. So, Steed ordered a taxi. When it came, Arcos was at the wheel. Uh, Fourteen carried to Luna, por favor. Uh, si, si, senor. While later, while rounding a corner of the narrow streets, Arcos stopped the taxi. The door of the taxi opened. Markin jumped in. Oh, I beg your pardon, this taxi. Buenos noches, senor. Sleep well. Drive on, Arcos. <laughs> In my day, hard, harsh rubbing was the way to shift grease off my old coal stove. What's changed? What's changed? Surfaces have changed. They can't take hard rubbing. They need Handy Andy care. Modern stoves and all modern surfaces need Handy Andy liquid cleaner with active ammonia. Use Handy Andy straight from the bottle. It lifts dirt without hard rubbing or scratching. Surfaces have changed. It's time I changed to Handy Andy too. They say once an OMA user, always an OMA user. Here's Mrs. Senior of Mboggan Tweeney. I've stuck to cold water, OMA, and I'm still using it. It's the strongest washing powder I've used. There's no dirt or stains that can stand up to cold water OMO. The Avengers. <laughs> Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo. <laughs> <laughs>